May it please the tribunal, we would like to call at this time as a witness, Dr. Franz Blaha. God. Yeah. Repeat it, please. I swear by God. It's swear by God. The Almighty and Omniscient. And I'm making what I wish That I will speak the truth, the pure truth. That I die reine will say. And will withhold. Nicht verschweigen. And will withhold. Nicht verschweigen. And add nothing. And nicht zu so resistant there. You can sit down if you wish. You're Dr. Franz Blaha, a native of, and a citizen of Czechoslovakia, are you not? I know. I understand that you're able to speak German, and for technical reasons, uh, I suggest that we conduct this examination in German, although I know your native tongue is Czech. Isn't that right? Ja jsem ochoten z technických důvodů mluvit německy, a sice proto, že v posledních sedmi letech, která jsou předmětem mého svědectví, byl jsem v čistě německém ovzduší a že také záležitosti, které dnes projednány budou, mají velmi mnoho německých termínů, které nelze žádným způsobem v německé řeči, v jiné řeči než německé vyjádřit. Now, uh, Dr. Blaha, uh, by education and training and profession, you're a doctor of medicine. Yo. And uh, in 1939, you were the head of a hospital in Czechoslovakia. You were arrested, were you not, by the Germans in uh, 1939 after they occupied Czechoslovakia? And were you confined in uh, various prisons between 1939 and 1941? Yeah. And from 1941 to April of 1945, you were confined at Dachau, concentration camp. Yeah, I wouldn't uh, have read it if we had had time to uh, have a Russian and French translation, but unfortunately that wasn't possible in the two days we had. I, uh, Frank Franz Blaha, being duly sworn, depose and state as follows. <coughs> I studied medicine in Prague, Vienna, Strasbourg and Paris, and received my diploma in 1920. <coughs> From 1920 to 1926, I was a clinical assistant. In 1926, I became chief physician of the Iglau Hospital in Moravia, Czechoslovakia. I held this position until 1939, when the Germans entered Czechoslovakia and I was seized as a hostage and held a prisoner for cooperating with the Czech government. I was sent as a prisoner to the Dachau concentration camp in April 1941. 
and remained there until the liberation of the camp in April 1945. Until July 1941, I worked in a punishment company. After that, I was sent to the hospital and subjected to the experiments in typhoid being conducted by Dr. Mermelstadt. After that, I was to be made the subject of an experimental operation and only succeeded in avoiding this by admitting that I was a physician. If this had been known before, I would have suffered because intellectuals were treated very harshly in the punishment company. In October 1941, I was sent to work in the herb plantation and later in the laboratory for processing herbs. In June 1942, I was taken into the hospital as a surgeon. Shortly afterwards, I was directed to conduct a stomach operation on 20 healthy prisoners. Because I would not do this, I was put in the autopsy room where I stayed until April 1945. While there, I performed approximately 7,000 autopsies. In all, 12,000 autopsies were performed under my direction. From mid-1941, to the end of 1942, some 500 operations on healthy prisoners were performed. <laughs> These were for the instruction of the SS medical students and doctors and included operations on the stomach, gallbladder, spleen, and throat. These were performed by students and doctors of only two years training, although they were very dangerous and difficult. Standout and Fuhrer Dr. Lalling frequently witnessed these operations. During my time at Dachau, I was familiar with the many kinds of medical experiments carried on there with human victims. These persons were never volunteers, but were forced to submit to such acts. Malaria experiments on about 1,200 people were conducted by Dr. Klaus Schilling. <laughs> between 1941 and 1945. Schilling was personally asked by Himmler to conduct these experiments. The victims were either bitten by mosquitoes or given injections of malaria sporozites taken from mosquitoes. Different kinds of treatment were applied, including quinine, pyrifer, neosalversan, antiparin, pyramidon, and a drug called 2516 boring. I autopsied bodies of people who died from these malaria experiments. 30 to 40 died from the malaria itself. 300 to 400 died later from diseases which were fatal because of the physical condition resulting from the malaria attacks. In addition, there were deaths resulting from poisoning due to overdoses of neosalversan and pyramidon. Dr. Schilling was present at the time of my autopsies on the bodies of his patients. In 1942 and 1943, experiments on human beings were conducted by Dr. Sigsman Rasha to determine the effects of changing air pressure. As many as 25 persons were put at one time into a speedily constructed van, into a specially constructed van, in which pressure could be increased or decreased as required. The purpose was to find out the effects of high altitude and of rapid descents by parachutists. I have seen the people lying on the floor of the van through a window in the van. Most of the prisoners used died from these experiments from internal hemorrhages of the lungs or brain. The rest coughed blood when taken out. It was my job to take the bodies out and to send the internal organs to Munich for study as soon as they were found to be dead. About 400 to 500 prisoners were experimented on. 
Those not dead were sent to invalid blocks and liquidated shortly afterwards. Only a few escaped. Rasher also conducted experiments on the effect of cold water on humans. This was done to find a way for reviving aviators who had fallen into the ocean. The subject was placed in ice cold water and kept there until he was